Are you looking to make your new Refactivus Various Pump work with your Apex by Neptune Systems? Hello, this is Carlos from Coralview welcoming you back to another episode of CVTV. In our last video, we covered the basic fundamentals and new features of the Various DC controller from Reef Octopus. On this video, we will concentrate on connecting your Various Pump to a third-party controller by using the available 0 to 10 volt port. This makes the Various Pump very versatile and almost universally compatible with most system controllers like the Neptune Systems Apex or the Reef Angel. I will show you how to program your Neptune Systems controller to take advantage of the advanced controllability of the various skimmer pump and water pump. By the end of this video, you will know how to produce surge effects, ramp the various water pump up and down, and even cover some unique settings to use with your various skimmer pump. Now, this video will only cover the configuration and programming of your various pump with an Apex controller from Neptune Systems. It assumes that you already have a fully configured and working Apex controller as well as a free variable speed port. You should be familiar with the creation of virtual and regular outlets. If you have not configured your Apex controller, a really good place to start is Neptune Systems website. They have an amazing website full of support articles, videos, as well as a support forum with a thriving community of experienced staff and fellow Apex users. You can visit them at www.neptunesystems.com. An aquarium system controller and the connection cable are not included with the pump, but are required. To connect your various pump to the system controller, you will need to plug one end of a connection cable into the 3.5 mm jack on the side of the various controller, and the opposite end with the Ethernet jack into the available 0 to 10 volt port on your existing system controller. Now that we have the pump and controller connected to our Neptune Systems Apex, let's get started with Reef Octopus Various Pump Advanced Controlling. This is the classic interface for your Apex controller. Here you're able to see your tank parameters as well as a quick glance of the status of your outlets. We will be using the classic interface for today's video. Now, some of you may be asking, why aren't we using the Apex Fusion interface? And the reason is because we need to create virtual outlets. At the time of this recording, you cannot create virtual outlets through Apex Fusion. Before we start, there are two things that we need to do. We need to figure out which variable speed controls our pumps. I connected my two pumps to variable speed 3 and 4 on my Apex. I don't know which controls which, so my left pump is controlled by variable speed 3 or 4, and my right pump is controlled by variable speeds 3 or 4. The only way to tell is to actually turn each of the variable speed pumps on, and then physically see if the pump has turned on. So to do so, I'm going to scroll down and find my variable speed outlets, and then all I need to do is one at a time, turn them on. As soon as I turn it on, one of the pumps will turn on. Now I can tell that my left pump is on variable speed 3, and therefore I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to turn variable speed 4 on. And by default, my pump on the right will be turning on and controlled by variable speed 4. The next step in the process is to find the bottom speed of our pumps with the corners plumbing and the weight of the water, the pump will reach a bottom speed at which point it will stop physically moving water. The pump will continue to run, but it will stall and it won't be able to push any water. So our job is to find out what that bottom speed is for each of the pumps. To do so, we're going to scroll down and we're going to go ahead and turn on one of the pumps. Next, we just need to ramp the pump slowly down until the pump physically stops pushing water upwards. So let me go ahead and do that. And at 80% no, 70% is still pushing water. 55% is still pushing water. 42% is still pushing water. 30% is still pushing water. 20% it actually stopped. So I know that my left pump has a bottom speed of 20%. We'll repeat the process with the right pump, which I have already done, and I figured that my right pump has a bottom speed of 30%. 
Now that we have established that our pumps have a bottom speed of 30%, and yes, the left pump has a bottom speed of 20%, but for simplicity of programming, we're just going to take the highest number and use it. So our pumps have a bottom speed of 30%. Now we need to create the profiles. Profiles are flow patterns. They tell the pump how to run. They do not tell the pump when to run. When to run is done by the scheduling on the outlets. We will need a total of five profiles. We'll need a ramp up and ramp down profile during the day. We will need a pulsing profile during the middle of the day as well. And then we will need a ramp up and ramp down profile for nighttime. To create the profile, we just go to configuration, profile setup. Now, the drop down box in the middle tells us which profile we're in. I already have some profiles created. As you can see, I have gyre feed for my max spec gyre, day up, day down, and so forth. I need to find the next available empty profile. In this case, the empty profiles are usually known with the generic name PF2, PF3, PF4. I recommend always change the name of your profile so that you can spot the empty profiles later on. So let's grab PF2. Now, you saw that I had a profile called day up, day down, and so forth. I cannot use that name for this setting. So what I need to do is I need to have a profile with a unique name, otherwise I'm going to have some programming conflicts. So this profile is going to be called CL for closed loop day underscore up. And this tells me that this profile is going to be my ramp up profile during the day. As I just said, it's a ramp profile. So control type, we're going to change it from pump to ramp. Now, my ramp time, I'm going to leave it as about 10 minutes. So I want this pump to ramp up from my minimum speed to my maximum speed in the time lapse of 10 minutes. So I'm going to have the start intensity 30%. And why is it 30%? We just figured out that our pumps have a bottom speed of 30%. Then my end intensity, let's make it 80%. I don't want to make it 100% just because I don't. So 30 to 80 seems like a good intensity. All right, let's scroll down and hit update. Now we need to create the other profiles just the same way. So let's create our day down profile. So let's find our next available empty profile. Let's go ahead and rename it to CL for closed loop day underscore down. It's going to be control type ramp. And then my ramp type is going to be 10 minutes. Now my start intensity is going to be 80% and my bottom or end intensity is going to be 30%. Remember, this is ramping down. So it's going from high intensity to low intensity. Let's go ahead and scroll down, hit update and wait for it to save. Now let's go ahead and create the pulse profile. To do this, just drop down and select the next available profile. Let's call it CL for closed loop underscore pulse. Control type is going to be pump. Let's synchronize is not enabled. Divided by 10 is not enabled. Initial off time. This means how long does the profile wait before it starts. For our case, we want it to start immediately. So it's going to be zero. On time is going to be how long does this profile pulse the pump at maximum speed? And then how long does it pulse at minimum speed for the off time? So on time, let's make it 60 seconds. For the off time, let's make it 60 seconds. So what this pump is going to do is it's going to push water at a higher speed for 60 seconds and then slow down and push water at the lowest speed for 60 seconds, therefore creating a pulse. Our intensity is our flow. So our minimum intensity is going to be 50% and our maximum intensity is going to be 80%. So what this means is that the pump is going to push water at 80% for 60 seconds and then slow down and push water at 50% for 60 seconds, therefore creating a long pulse. Let's hit update and our pulse profile has been saved. The next set of profiles we need to create are the night profiles for our ramp up and ramp down at a lower intensity. So let's go ahead and hit on profile drop down box, select our next empty profile and let's call this one CL for closed loop night underscore up. It's going to be a ramp up profile, so let's change the control type to ramp. Our ramp up time is going to be 10 minutes. 
our start intensity is going to be lower. So we're going to do 30% for our start intensity and let's just do 50% for our end intensity. So this pump is going to ramp up from 30% to 50% during 10 minutes and then repeat over and over and over again. So let's go ahead and hit update. Our last profile to create is our night down profile. So let's go ahead and hit profile drop down box, select the next available slot, and let's rename this to CL night underscore down. Now notice I keep hitting the N but nothing happens. And that's because I've reached the limit of characters allowed in a profile name. So you just have to remember that sometimes the names will be trimmed down. You can try to change the name to something a little bit shorter or just remember that instead of down, it's just down. I'll just leave it as is and I'll remember when I do my programming that there's no N at the end. Control type is going to be ramp. Ramp time is 10 minutes just like the day one and the night up one. Start intensity is the opposite. So let's make that start intensity 50% and the end intensity 30%. So then it's going to start at 50% and slowly ramp down during 10 minutes until it gets to 30%. Let's scroll down and hit update and our profiles have been created. The next step in the process is to create our virtual outlet. Now, what are virtual outlets? Well, they only exist within the Apex program. They don't have a physical representation, so you can't find the outlet on an EB-8 or an EB-4. Again, they're only virtual and only exist within the program. They're used as a virtual on and off switch. So if you flip the switch up, you can program it so it runs one profile. And then if you flip the switch down, you can program it and run a different profile. You can also program the time lapse of the switch. So you can have switch flip up and then 10 minutes later you can have the switch flip down and then 10 minutes later flip up and down. And then as the switch flips up and down, you're also running profile A or profile B. They work in conjunction with the physical outlets to create really complex programming that you wouldn't be able to do just by using the physical outlet and the profiles. To create a virtual outlet, we just need to go to configuration, module setup. Now, a virtual outlet is going to be a little tricky to add. What we need to do is we need to fake the Neptune system into thinking that another EB-8 or an EB-4 has been added to it, even though it hasn't. So it becomes a virtual EB-8 or an EB-4. To do so, we scroll down and add modules. Now, we're going to need a total of five virtual outlets for our programming of the closed loop. So we are going to have to add a DC-8 or an EB-8. So let's go ahead and select Direct Connect 8, DC8 or EB8 and add the module. Now that the module has been added, if we scroll down to the bottom and see our Apex module list, there is no additional EB8 in this system. Now I have an EB8 and an EB8 here, but those are my actual physical EB8s. I just added a third EB8 and it's not listed here. And the reason why is because this list is only for physical modules. There are no virtual modules listed in here. But we can confirm that our virtual module has been added by going to Configuration, Outlet Setup. And then if we scroll down and click on the outlet drop down box and scroll down to the bottom, now you see that there are eight new outlets that have been added that weren't there before. Now these outlets are virtual. They don't have an actual EB-8 that will turn on and off. It's just an Apex virtual outlet that the program will turn on and off, but it's only virtual. It will only turn on and off within the program itself. Before we go and create our virtual outlets, let's recap our schedule or our programming goal. We need the pumps to ramp up and ramp down from 8 o'clock in the morning till 1 o'clock p.m. Then we need the pumps to pulse between 1 p.m. and 2 o'clock p.m. Then go back to the regular ramp up and ramp down from 2 p.m. till 10 p.m. And then ramp up and ramp down at a slower frequency and a slower intensity from 10 p.m. till 8 a.m. So technically we need five virtual outlets, two for the ramp up and ramp down during the day, one for the pulsing, and then two for the ramp up and ramp down during nighttime at a different intensity. To create the first virtual outlet, all we need to do is hit the drop down box and select one of the virtual outlets that we just created. Notice that we have eight new outlets in here that haven't been used, so we're gonna select the first one. 
the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename the outlet. You need to make sure that the outlet name is a unique name. If you have two outlets with the same name, you're going to have some programming conflicts. So make sure it is a unique name. So I'm going to name it vert, V-I-R-T for virtual, C-L for closed loop, underscore day, O-S-C, oscillate. Control type is going to be advanced. My icon is going to be up and down arrows. I'm going to leave the log disabled and then I'm going to go ahead and clear this default programming and I'm going to program my own. So the first thing we got to do is we got to make sure that this outlet oscillates on and off. And at what rate? It has to be the same rate as our profiles. So if you remember our day profiles, they were ramping at a frequency of every 10 minutes. So it was ramping up for 10 minutes and then ramping down for 10 minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to type OSC for oscillate. We need this outlet to oscillate between on and off and then we need to establish the initial time off. How long does the outlet wait before it starts? In our case, we need the outlet to start immediately. So we're going to type 000, colon, 00, The first set of three digits stands for minutes. The second set of digits starts for seconds. Then forward slash, and then 010 for 10 minutes, and then forward slash, 010 for 10 minutes, then on. And what this means is this outlet is going to oscillate with an initial time of zero, so it's going to start immediately. It's going to be on for 10 minutes, and then it's going to be off for 10 minutes. And why is it on for 10 minutes and off for 10 minutes? Why isn't it off for 10 minutes and then on for 10 minutes? And the rule is that if you put on at the end of the statement, then the second set of digits becomes on and the third set of digits becomes off. If I were to put off, then the second set of digits becomes off and the third set of digits becomes on. So now we want this outlet to be on, but I don't want this outlet to be on in the middle of the day from one o'clock until two o'clock because I'm going to be running my pulse virtual outlet. And I don't want this outlet to be on in the middle of the night because I'm running my night profile. So I need to put some rules in terms of when this outlet should be on and when this outlet should be off. So assuming that this outlet is going to be on the entire day, now I have to tell it when the outlet should be off. To do that, I'm going to type if time and I'm going to do 13 colon zero zero. And Apex works on military time. So 1 o'clock p.m. actually means 1,300 hours. 2, 14, colon, 0, 0, 2 p.m., then off. What this means is if the time is between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m., then this outlet should be off. It shouldn't be turning on and off. It should just be off completely. And I also want this outlet to not be on during nighttime. So then I'm going to type if time 22 zero zero two zero eight zero zero then off so this line means that if the time is between 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. then the outlet should be off so I'm gonna scroll down and save now as I explained earlier we're gonna need two virtual outlets for a day ramp up and ramp down so what I need to do is create a new outlet let's go ahead and click on the virtual outlet drop-down box and Let's select our next available virtual outlet. Let's go ahead and change the name immediately to something new. So I'm going to call it vert CL for closed loop, and I'm just going to call it day. So one is my oscillating, and one is my day. Control type is going to be advanced. Then my icon type, again, is going to be up and down. I'm going to keep the log disabled. Let's go ahead and clean this up and we're going to type our program. Now, the second outlet is going to be on all the time, but technically not. Again, just like the virtual day oscillating outlet, it's going to be on except for between 1 o'clock p.m. and 2 o'clock p.m. and between 10 p.m. and 8 in the morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type set on. So I want this outlet to be on. And then my rules. If time 13 colon 0, 0, 2, 14 colon zero zero then off just like the previous outlet if the time is between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. then turn it off and then if time 22002800 then off so again just like the virtual oscillating outlet i need this outlet to be on 
but off between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. and off between 10 p.m. and 8 o'clock in the morning. So now I have my two virtual outlets for the day. Let's scroll down and hit update outlet to save. The next step in the process is for me to create a virtual outlet for my pulsing time between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. To do this, we're just going to create a new outlet. We're going to go ahead and hit on the outlet drop-down box, select our next available virtual outlet, just like before. Let's go ahead and rename it. So I'm going to call this one vert CL and then underscore pulse. So virtual closed loop pulse. My control type is going to be advanced, then it's going to be up and down arrows, disable the log, and then let's go ahead and clear the advanced setup. Just like the previous day outlet, I need this outlet to be on. So I'm going to set on, and then I need this outlet to be off during particular times. I don't want the pulsing to be on between 8 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock p.m. I also don't want the pulsing to be on between 2 o'clock p.m. and 10 p.m. And I don't want the outlet to be on between 10 p.m. and 8 o'clock in the morning. So technically, I only want the outlet to be on between 1 and 2 p.m. Therefore, the outlet should be off between 2 p.m. all the way around to 1 p.m of the next day. So what we're going to do is if time 1400 hours 2 p.m. to 1300 hours 1 p.m. of the next day then off. So what this means is this outlet is going to be on unless it is between 2 o'clock p.m. or 1 o'clock p.m. the next day. Let's go ahead and scroll down and hit update outlet. The next outlet we need to create is our night virtual outlet. Now for the nighttime we need two virtual outlets just like we needed for the daytime. So let's go ahead and uh, hit on our outlet drop down box and select our next available outlet. Let's go ahead and change name immediately. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Your outlet name is limited only to 12 characters. After that, you can type it, but it won't read it. So I could type vert cl underscore night osc. The problem is that this name, even though it is typing, it is more than 12 characters. It's actually 15 characters. So now when I save this, it's only going to save as virtual cl underscore night. So I have to remember that when I am creating my outlets. So I'm going to have to shorten this name to and T. So virtual close loop underscore NT for night OSC. Then control type is going to be advanced. My up and down arrow icon, let's leave it as log disabled. And then let's go ahead and delete the advanced setup window default. Now this pump should oscillate on and off at a particular rate. Remember how we set the profiles for night up and down for 60 seconds? Well, those are the 60 seconds that we need to use on this profile. So we're going to type OSC, oscillate, initial time off of zero, forward slash 60 seconds, so 001, one minute, and then forward slash 001, colon, 00, one minute, then on. What this line means is it's going to oscillate in an initial off time of zero, and then it's going to turn on for one minute, and then it's going to turn off for another minute. Now, this pump shouldn't be turning on and off throughout the entire day, so we're going to need to add limitations to it. So let's go ahead and start a new line and type if time 08 colon 00 to 22 colon 00, then off. And what this means is that the pump is going to oscillate on and off for one minute, but if the time is between 8 o'clock in the morning and 10 p.m., then this virtual outlet is going to be completely off. So let's go ahead and scroll down and hit update outlet. And just like the virtual day, we need a second outlet. So let's go ahead and create the fifth virtual outlet of our programming. And let's go ahead and rename this to vert cl underscore nt for nighttime. Control type, 
we're going to leave it as advanced icon it's going to be up and down arrow log is disable let's go ahead and clear this default information and then just like the virtual CL day we need to set it to be on set on but we need to also be able to turn it off during a particular time and just like the virtual CL night oscillate we need it to be off between 8 in the morning and 10 p.m. so let's go ahead and type if time 08 to 22 then off and again what this means is this virtual night outlet is going to be on unless is between 8 o'clock in the morning and 10 p.m. in which time it'll be off let's go ahead and scroll down and hit outlet now that we've created virtual outlets and profiles we need to figure out a way to call them to work together to achieve our flow patterns to do this we just program our variable speed outlets as we established earlier in the programming part of this video my left pump is on variable speed 3 and the right pump is on variable speed 4 so let's go ahead and program them to do so we're gonna go to configuration and then outlet setup Let's scroll down and select our variable speed 3 outlet. The first thing we need to do is we need to rename it to something unique. So I'm going to call it CL various underscore L for left. Control type, I leave it as advanced. Icon, I like to change it to spigot. Log, I'm going to disable and let's clear the advanced setup. Now, the programming on this outlet is a little intricate so what I'm going to do is instead of typing it all I'm gonna go ahead and paste my program and then we'll go over each line so let me go ahead and paste so one thing we must remember is that the bottom lines always have higher priority than the top lines so what this means is let's get an example of this line if virtual outlet night OSC oscillate is equal to on so if the virtual night oscillating outlet is on, then execute profile close night down. So what this means is that this program is telling the pump that if the virtual night oscillating outlet, the outlet that we program to be on and off, on and off between 10 p.m. and 8 o'clock in the morning, if that outlet is an on position, then go ahead and execute the profile close loop night down. So it's going to ramp down. What happens now when the virtual night oscillating outlet is in off position? Remember, it's a switch, so it's on and off. So what happens when it's a switch? That one, we revert back to the top. And if you look at the third line, if virtual CL night equals on, then execute profile CL night up so what this means is when this outlet is on then execute this profile when this outlet is on execute this profile remember the order this outlet is going to be on for a particular time and then it's going to be off when it's off this line becomes null and then it reverts back to this line so what is happening is when this outlet is on then this runs when this outlet is off then this line is no longer true and we revert back to this line so now you have a sinking so when one pump is ramping up the other pump is ramping down let's take a look at the day profile look at this fourth line and it says if virtual closed loop day oscillating outlet is on then execute close day down profiles if that virtual outlet is on then ramp down but what happens when that virtual outlet is off then it reverts back to the first line if virtual CL day outlet is on then CL day up so ramp up so again while this outlet is on this statement is true and this profile day down is executed but when this outlet turns off because the switch is going on and off then this line is no longer true so it reverts back to the default which is run day up now here's the second line if outlet virtual close pulse equals on then close pulse what this means is if this outlet is on then run close pulse now what makes this line not override the pulse 
because remember on the virtual outlet we established that the virtual night OSC outlet is only going to run between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. in the morning so it's not going to run at the same time as this during the time of 1 o'clock p.m. and 2 o'clock p.m. the virtual pulse outlet is on everything else we have scheduled it to be completely off so none if if any of the other outlets are off none of these lines are true because these lines are only true if everything matches so if outlet if the virtual night OSC outlet is off then this line doesn't work and the previous line works and so forth and the last line we need to do is feed A. So what I'm going to do is if I press the feed button, then I want this pump to automatically turn off. Let's go ahead and hit update outlet. And there is an error. Error line 5. Most likely when I type this, I made a mistake on one of the virtual outlet names or profiles. So let's take a look at it. If outlet vert NTOSC. Well, let's see what we have. Let's scroll down in here and take a look at it. Ah, there is my error. Notice how I'm using vert CL underscore NTOSC. And here I have vert, so I'm missing the CL. So let me go ahead and type CL and let's type update again. And there you are. So now I have no error. So this programming should execute correctly. The next step in the process is to configure and program the pump on the right. And the pump on the right is going to be doing the opposite as the pump on the left. So when the pump on the left ramps up, the pump on the right ramps down during the day. Um, at night, when the left ramps up, the right will ramp down. So it's the opposite, which makes it easy, because all we need to do is take this programming and copy it. Let's go ahead and configure our variable speed outlet. First thing we need to do is change the name to uh, CL various underscore R for right. Control type is going to be advanced. Icon is going to be spigot. Let's go ahead and disable. And then let's go ahead and clear this and paste the programming from the previous one. But remember, it's the opposite. So in the left, it's up on the right it should be the opposite so instead of up this should be down instead of up this should be down remember the name has to be exactly the same so notice how the down is missing the n so it has to be missing the n in here in the clear day now this is down it should be up and the night should be up let's go ahead and scroll down and update the outlet. Since we copied and pasted, there shouldn't be any errors. So there, it's saved. The final step we need to do is we need to go back to our dashboard and switch this controllers to auto and auto. The second part of this video pertains to programming our skimmer. Our skimmer comes with a variable speed pump, so it is capable of slowing down when we feed our tank. Instead of completely turning off the skimmer, let's go ahead and just slow it down. To do this, we need to connect our skimmer pump to a variable speed port. In order to do this, I'm going to have to create a profile called skimmer feed. To do the profile, we're going to go ahead and go to configuration, in profile setup. Let's go ahead and drop the profile name and let's find our next available profile. Let's go ahead and call it SKMR underscore feed. Control type is going to be pump. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and slow down the pump. So the initial time is going to be zero. Then on time is going to be 60 seconds. And then off time is going to be 60 seconds. Then the minimum speed is going to be 30%. And our maximum speed is going to be 30%. As long as this profile is executed, then the pump is going to run at 30% for 60 seconds. And then 30% for 60 seconds. Therefore, we're fooling the system into thinking that it's pulsing but in reality, it's just running at constant speed of 30%. So let's go ahead and hit update. And now the profile has been saved. Now let's go ahead and configure the outlet. So let's go ahead and find my skimmer outlet, which is right here. And then all we need to do is add a new line. If feed A, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 
then we usually put on and off but you also can execute a profile so in this case I can do skmr underscore feed let's go ahead and hit update and the skimmer profile is saved so now your pump will slow down when you feed your tank hey everybody and thank you for watching I hope this video was helpful and you got a good understanding on how to connect your new various pump to your system controller. Please use the information you learned as a base or starting point and feel free to experiment more. Go ahead and create more profiles and have the pump change flow patterns multiple times during the day. Your pump is now able to do things that it could not do before, so have fun with it. The sky is the limit. If you would like more information or are experiencing issues with your new Refactopus various pump, or have a technical question that you wish to ask, please head over to www.coralv.com forward slash support and submit a support ticket. If you're in need of replacement parts, please head over to www.coralv.com for a complete list of all available parts. If you have any comments or tips that you wish to share with your fellow reefers, feel free to leave them in the area below. If this is your first time joining us, hit the subscribe button as we often release new videos related to reefing. Thank you again for watching CVTV and see you next time.